by the probability for that particular portion be multiplied by the probability for that element. So the first return for F, the first return for F, remember it was 15. So you subtract, so not 15 by 12. The first return for A was 12. We minus expected return, it was 12.6. So the difference is square. The first probability was 0 0.3. We go to the second one. The second one was the one which was 15. We minus 12.6. We square the probability is 0 0.4. Then we go to the next one, which is 10 minus 12.6. We square the probability is 0 0.3. So when you add them together and get the square root for that, that is what is meant to give you the standard division for A. So get the square root for that so that we get the standard division for A. You will also do the same for B. We shall also be required to do the same for B. So when you want to get a standard division for B, standard division for B, we also get the summation from, we shall also be required the summation of the first one, the last, there are three of them, return for B minus expected return for B, we square, then the probabilities like that. So the first return for B, we know it was six minus expected return, which was 6.3, the difference we square, the first probability was 0 0.3. Then we go to the second one, which was 7.5. We also minus 6.3. We square probability is 0 0.4. Then we shall also come up with what we shall be having there as 5 minus 6.3 is square, then 0 0.3 like that. So we shall add them together so that we get a total. Then once you have the total, also remember to get the square root. Also, remember to get the square root of that to give us the standard deviation. So what is the standard deviation for the first one? Standard deviation for A, anyone who has calculated? Anyone who has calculated for that? So the standard deviation is 2.11. What was the total before you got the standard deviation? I want it into three decimal places. This one was four what? Before you got this, the total was 4.44. So I want you to give it to me the, the figure that you get as the square root, make it into three decimal places. So I can see 2.107. That's now the standard deviation for air, 2.107. Then, the one for B, the one for B, the total should be which figure before we get the square root? 
So that's this one, this number will be 2.107. So this other one, the total is which here? Total should be one point. 1.11. So what should be now the square root for that? Should it be 1 1.0 1.053. 1.053. 1.053 like that. So is this three or four? I can see some people are saying it should be 1.054, not three. It should be four, but not three, like that. So that was meant to be the Roman letter one. That was meant to be the Roman letter one. How to get expected return for each security and also how to commute a standard division for each. So now we go to Roman letter two. We shall now go to the Roman letter two. That Roman letter two, they wanted you to get the correlation coefficient, the correlation coefficient between the two securities returns. So they want you to get the correlation coefficient. To get the correlation coefficient, when you want to calculate the correlation coefficient, so when you want to compute the correlation coefficient, so correlation coefficient is supposed to be given by correlation coefficient between A and B will be equal to the covariance between A and B, the standard deviation of A multiplied by the standard deviation for B. When you want to get the correlation coefficient between A and B, you simply get covariance between A and B divide by the standard deviation of A multiplied by the standard deviation of B. When you want to get the correlation coefficient. So we already have the standard deviation for A. Also we have the standard deviation for B. So what we are lacking there is the covariance between A and B. So to get the covariance, so covariance between A and B, it will be the summation from the first observation to the last, there were three of them. So take the return for A, return for A minus expected return for A, then return for B minus expected return for B, then multiply by the probability at that point. So when you want to get the covariance between A and B, simply take return for A minus expected return for A, return for B minus expected return for B, the difference multiply the probability for us. So the first return for A, the first return for A was 12 minus expected return, which was 12.6. Then the first return for B, it is six, minus expected return, which is 6.3. The first probability is 0 0.3. We got the second one. The second one, we have 15, minus 12.6, then 7.5, minus 6.3, probability of it occurring is 0 0.4. The next one is supposed to be 10 minus 12.6 and also 5 minus 6.3. The probability is 0 0.3. 
So get the total for that. That is what will give us the covariance between A and B. The covariance between A and B. So I've seen two point two two. I've seen two point two two. I've seen two point two two. So that now will be the covariance between A and B. The covariance between A and B. So now after that, we should be in a position to get that covariance. We should now be in a position to get that particular covariance between A and B. We should now be able to get the covariance between A and so the correlation coefficient, not the covariance. So covariance is 2.22. That is the covariance. Then we already have standard deviation for A and also the standard deviation for B. Standard deviation for A it is 2.107. Standard deviation for B was 1.0. 1.05 for that. So get that correlation coefficient between A and B. So get, so you round it off. Should either be positive one or negative one or in between. The correlation coefficient is either negative or positive. So you need to indicate that. We need to indicate that to see what we should be able to have. Someone is getting positive 0 0.7, confirm. Confirm very well that figure. Yeah, that figure, just round it off like to one decimal point and see what you'll get. Just round it off to like one decimal place, you'll see the figure you'll get. That figure should be positive one. Your value is positive one. Just confirm. Yeah, that figure, the variation is so small, it was due to the rounding off of these figures. The rounding off of those figures, but if they were exact, it will give you positive one. So we shall be using positive one. That correlation coefficient is positive one. Someone got 0 0.7, confirm your calculation. That's not correct. Yeah, but 0 0.9996 is correct, but now round it off to positive one. So that's now the correlation coefficient. Our correlation coefficient is positive one. Our correlation coefficient is meant to be positive one. So that is our Roman letter two, how to get the correlation coefficient between 
the two securities returns, how to get the correlation coefficient. Before you get the correlation coefficient, we must have the covariance. Before we get the correlation coefficient, we must first have the covariance. So now after that, we can check the Roman letter three. Roman letter three, they were saying that, determine the expected return of a portfolio consisting of 60% of security A and 40% for security B. 60% for security A and 40% for security B. So to get the expected return of the portfolio, expected return of the portfolio, we need to get the summation so expected return for the portfolio is the same as the weighted average. So it will be the same as the weighted average. So whereby you get the weight of air multiplied by expected return for air. We also add weight for B multiplied by expected return for B in that manner. When you want to calculate expected return for the portfolio, you simply get it as the weighted average, where you get the weight for A multiplied by expected return for A. Then we add the weight for B multiplied by expected return for B in that manner. So we start with the proportions or the weights. Proportion or the weights were given in the question. In that trauma letter three, they said that the portfolio determine the expected return of a portfolio consisting of 60% of security A. So this one will be 0 0.6. Expected return for A, you recall 12.6. 12.6, we also add the proportion for B is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, expected return for B it was 6.3 like So when you combine them together, that now will give you the expected return of the portfolio. When you combine them together, that now should be able to give you the expected return of the portfolio. So that figure should give us around which value. So I can see 10.08, 10.08. We should be able to get 10.08, 10.08. So after getting 10.08, the next item is now our Roman letter four where they wanted you to calculate the risk of the portfolio. That is the same as the actual standard deviation or the actual risk of the portfolio. The actual standard deviation or the actual risk of the portfolio. Let us now check how we can be able to get the actual standard deviation or the actual risk of the portfolio the actual standard deviation of the portfolio or the actual risk of the portfolio. So to get the actual standard deviation, to get the actual standard deviation, actual standard deviation or risk, or risk of the portfolio. So you want to see, how to get the actual standard deviation or actual or the risk of the portfolio. So for this question, it will be weight of A squared, then the variance of A like that. Then we also add weight of B squared, the variance of B like that. Then we also add, we shall also be required to add two multiplied by the weight of A, the weight of B, and also multiply the covariance, the covariance between A and B in that manner. 
the covariance between A and B, but we shall be getting the square root of that part. We get the square root of that part in that manner. We get the square root of that portion in that manner. We get the square root of that portion in that particular manner. So the proportions, we already have them. The proportions, we already have them. Like what we have used up there in the Roman letter three, that first proportion for A, remember it was 60%, which is the same as 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 squared. So this one is the variancy for A. You already had a variancy before you got the standard deviation. That variancy was 4.44. But to, to do away with the confusion, I would just use the standard deviation, but I square it. The standard deviation for M was 2.107, so you square it. But if you are able to know that this one is the same as the variancy, just use it directly the way it was, it was 4.44. But now that we are learning, and probably some people may get confused how to use the standard deviation and the variance. When you are given the standard deviation, square it to get the variance. But if they have given the variance, you use it directly the way it is. So now for this one, I will use the standard deviation because our understanding is to be square. The weight for B is 0 0.4. You also square that. Then the variance for B Take the standard deviation for B, which was 1.05, or you square it. Then we come up with that manner. Then two, multiplied by the weight for A. The weight for A it is 0 0.6. The weight for B it is 0 0.4. Then you calculated the covariance between A and B. It was 2.22. So that's now the information that we have. Then out of that, we get the square root of that element. Get the square root of that element. Get the square root of that element. So that is how we should be able to come up with the standard deviation. Someone has computed, I can see 1.686, 1 1.686, 1 1.686. So just confirm whether it is correct because that is only one person who has given me the figure. So also confirm whether they are correct. Also confirm whether that figure is correct. Yes, so majority of you are saying it is correct. So that's now meant to be our Roman letter four. But I want us to add there the Roman letter five. We shall add there the Roman letter five. So Roman letter five is supposed to be, Roman letter five, we can add there as, compute the percentage of the risk minimization. 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 So let us now see how to get the percentage of the risk minimization. Let us see how to get the percentage of the risk minimization. Let us see how to get the percentage of the risk minimization, how to get the percentage.
Let us now see how to get the percentage. Percentage of the risk minimization. Percentage of the risk minimization. So to get the percentage of the risk minimization, you get the weighted, weighted standard deviation for the portfolio. We subtract the actual, actual standard deviation of the portfolio. We also divide by the weighted standard deviation of the portfolio. So once you get it, we normally express it as a percentage. Once we have it, we normally express it as a percentage. So we shall compute the weighted because we don't have it. Actual is what we have just calculated. The actual is what we have just calculated. So now we get the weighted. So correlation coefficient between A and B was positive. The correlation coefficient between A and B, it was positive. So if it was positive, when you want to compute the weighted, the weighted standard deviation for the portfolio, it will be the weighted average. It will be the weighted average. It will be the weighted average. We shall be getting it as the weighted average. Where we get weight of weight of air. The weight of A multiplied by the standard deviation for A plus weight of B, the standard deviation for B in that manner. So if it is negative, we normally subtract. But when it is positive, we add. When it is positive, we add. When it is negative, you subtract. So the weight for A, we know it was 0 0.6. Then the standard deviation for A, it is meant to be 2.107. Then we add the weight for B was 0 0.4. The standard deviation for B, we know it was 1.054, like that. So you combine them, then we get the value for that. So just confirm it is giving us which we have. So you are still getting 1.686. You'll still be getting the figure of 1.686. So now out of that, we can get the percentage of the risk minimization. We can now come up with percentage of the risk minimization. So, weighted is what we have just computed 1.686. Actual is what we calculated in the Roma letter form. You remember, it was also 1.686. You also divide by 1.686. So, you show it as a percentage. You show that figure as a percentage. And you will discover that when the correlation coefficient is positive one, there will be no risk minimization. But if it was negative one, we could have gotten 100%. But now it is 0%. For now, it is actually 0%. Where 
when we compute, it is giving us zero percent. So we want to comment about that. We want to comment about that information. We want to comment about that information. So we can comment that. We can comment that if security A and B are combined to form the portfolio, if security A and B are combined to form the portfolio, if security A and B are combined to form the portfolio, then there will be zero risk minimization. There will be zero risk minimization. There will be zero risk minimization. Yeah, so there will be no risk minimization. That's basically what we mean. When the correlation coefficient is positive one, there is no risk minimization. If it is negative one, we normally get 100%. If it is negative one, we normally get 100%. So we shall be referring to that to see what else you can get. So that question is on the portfolio theory. That question is on the portfolio theory. Then I want us to do another question which combines portfolio theory and CAPEM. I also want us to do another question which will combine the portfolio theory and CAPEM. So this question I want us to check is question number 13. We go through the question number 13. Let us go through the question number 13. We go through the question number 13 and see what else we can get from it. So that question number 13, that question number 13, still in the same model paper, they were saying that ABC Limited Investment Fund comprises of four major projects, details of which are as follows, details of which are as follows. They gave you stock A, B, C, and D. You are given number of the shares. You are also given the expected return, standard deviation of the return, correlation with the market. Then the risk free rate of return is 5%. The probability distribution of a market portfolio return are given as follows. So, there is the probability and the forecasted return of the market. So the variancy of return for the market portfolio is 169. Then variancy return of the market portfolio is 169%. Roma letter one, using portfolio theory, evaluate whether this portfolio is super efficient, efficient or inefficient. Roma letter two, using CAPEM, advise whether the management of this company should change the composition of their portfolio or not, whether they should change the composition of their portfolio or not. So let us first calculate expected return for the market. It was not given. You need first of all to get the expected return of the portfolio. We shall first of all compute the expected return of the portfolio. Expected return for the portfolio was not given. We need to get, so not the portfolio, but for the market. Expected return for the market had not been given. So to get expected return for the market, to get expected return for the market, you just get the summation for each. You get the summation from the first to the last. So you can see there were like one, there were five observations for that. So take the return for the market, not by the probability for each occurring, not by, by the probability for each occurring. So the first return is given as 14. So you take 14 multiplied by 0 0.2 then you also add what we have as 12 multiplied by 0 0.15 0 0.15 the next one is meant to be 17 
multiplied by 0 0.3. Then you add the next one is 22. Multiplied by 0 0.25. Then you also add. So we also need to add the last one. That last one is meant to be 27. Also multiplied by 0 0.1. So compute that and see what should be our expected return for the market. Someone has computed in saying 17.9. I hope it is 17.9. So we have a figure of 17.9. We have a value of 17.9. So once we have done that, we want now to determine which among those portfolio is meant to be super efficient, efficient or inefficient. So I will be having the column for the stock. I will be having the column for the stock. Then the return, the return of the portfolio. So return of the portfolio will be given by the capital market line equation, capital market line equation. So capital market line equation will be risk free rate plus expected return for the market minus the risk free rate. Then the standard deviation for the market multiplied by the standard deviation of the portfolio. Then we shall now be compared expected return of the portfolio minus the return for the portfolio then we comment that means we tell whether it is super or inefficient or efficient whether it is super efficient or inefficient so the first one is stock n the first one is meant to be stock A. So to get the return for stock A or return of the portfolio, risk free rate was given. The risk free rate was given. Risk free rate was given. When you check there, they were able to give us a risk free rate of 5%. 5% by that. Expected return for the market is what we have just calculated, 17.9, we also subtract five. Then the standard deviation for the market, they gave you the variancy for the market. Are you able to see the variancy of the market before required? Variancy of return on the market portfolio is 169. So for you to get that variancy of the market, get the square root of 169. So confirm for me, what is that particular value? So get the square root, give me the standard deviation for that. So they are saying it is 13, that figure is 13. Then the standard deviation of the portfolio has been given, the standard deviation of the portfolio so standard deviation for that portfolio, when you check, they were able, we are on stock A, they gave you 17. They gave us 17. So compute and give me the value for that. Compute and give me the value for that. So anyone who has calculated, so just round it off to two decimal places, 21.87, 21.87. 
can see 21.87. So let us now come here and see the figure we get. So take expected return for the portfolio minus the return for the portfolio. So expected return of stock A had been given in the question. Expected return for A is 12. Expected return for A is 12. Then the return is what you have just calculated, 21.87. 21.87. So that figure is negative. That value is negative. So give it is negative what? That value is negative. The value is negative what? Negative 9.87. 9.87. So this return of the portfolio is the benchmark or the market. So the market is promising 21.87, but we shall be getting 12. We shall be getting 12. So it has given you a negative, which will mean that that particular stock is inefficient. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. That's now for M. We got to be got to B. So when it comes to B, it is the same. It is still 5, then 17.9 minus 5, we also divide by 13. The standard deviation for that portfolio B, the standard deviation for that portfolio B, they gave you 22. You are given 22. So we get that figure. So give me that value, 26.83, So when it comes to this portion, when it comes to that portion, you can see they gave us 20. So it is 20 minus 26.83. So even that one, it is inefficient. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or overvalued by the market. Inefficient or overvalued by the market. We also go to see, we shall also be required to go to see. When it comes to C, it is five, then plus, there is 17.9 minus five, divided by 13. So the standard deviation was given for that. That standard deviation was given as 15. So that should be able to give us which figure. I can see 19.88. So if it's not correct, you remind me. I've seen 19.88. I've seen a figure of 19.88. Then when you check through the question, when you check through the question, expected was given. That expected, they gave us 18. So 18 minus 19.88. So even that one is negative. It is inefficient or overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or overvalued by the market. 
Then we go to the last one. We check the last one, which is supposed to be D. We now go to D. We check D. Now we go to D. So when it comes to D, when it comes to D, we shall also be able to do the same. So we also do the same 5 plus 17.9, 17.9 minus 5, also divide by 13. So this one, we are meant to multiply by, we are meant to multiply by 20. So we get the figure for that level. So someone has given me 24.85, 24.85, then now it should be what you are given there, what you are given there is 16. So it is also inefficient. So you also comment that it is inefficient. It is inefficient or overvalued by the market. So apart from now for each, we also need to get the overall. We also need to get the overall for that. We also need to get the overall because for each, all of them are inefficient. All of them are inefficient. We need now to check whether overall will it be inefficient or efficient. Whether overall will be inefficient or efficient. So let us now check for the overall or combined. We check for the overall or the combined. We now check the one for the overall. Now check the one for the overall. When it comes to the overall or the combined. So first we get the total, total market value. We shall first come up with the total market value. We need to get the total market value that point. So to get the total market value, when you want to compute the total market value, we start with the air. So air, the number of the shares given were 4 million, then multiplied by market price per share, which was 15. We go to B, we go to B, which is meant to be 2 million. Market price per share was 13. Market price per share was 13. We go to C. C, it is 4 million. Market price per share was given as 10. So D, you are given 6 million also multiplied by 13. So give me those figures. The first one is coming to, which is giving us which value? So multiply, you give me those values. Multiply, you give me those. So the first one will give us which amount? The first one is giving us how much? So I can see 16. How about the second one? 26. The third one should give us which value? 40. Then finally, the last one should be 78. So add them together. Add them together and give me the values. 
So we add them together. So it is 204. 204. So what we need to do is first of all to get the combined. We need to get the combined return of the portfolio. We need to get the combined return of the portfolio. So we had already calculated them. We had, but we only combined them using those proportions. So the combined return of the portfolio. So the first one, you take the 60, divide by the total 204, multiplied by 21.87. Yeah, these figures you already have them. 21.87, we had already calculated the return of stock there. We go to B, which will be 26, also divided by 204. That return for B, we got 26.83. 26.83, if you recall, we calculated those figures. The next one should be 14, also 204, multiplied by 19.88, 19.88. The last one is meant to be 78, also divided by 204, multiplied by 24.85. So those figures, you have them. Those figures, you have them. Remember to compute so we had already calculated them we are only combining them together we are only combining them together they are only combining them together we are only combining them together so you let me know that they are correct figures yeah me i'm just assuming those are the figures we calculated are they correct just a confirmation whether those values are correct. So when you combine and add, you are getting which value? So 23.25. We are getting 23.25. Then we also need to calculate. We also need to get a combined expected return of the portfolio. We also need to get the combined expected return of the portfolio. We still use the same combination. So the first one will be 60, also divided by the total. Then multiplied by that expected was given for A, it was 12. For A, it was 12. You also combine it. This one should be 26, 204. We also, you are given 20. You are given 20. The next one is supposed to be, the next one is supposed to be 40. Also divided by 204. Then, the next one is supposed to be 18. Then we also have 78. Also, we multiplied by So add them and see which value are we going to get. Mm -hmm. 
E na tukua which figure? 15.73. So we are getting 15. So now we can get, we can show whether it is super efficient, efficient or inefficient. So get the combined, we get the combined expected return of the portfolio. Then we subtract the combined return of the portfolio. So, this one we have just calculated. We were able to get 15.73. The other one, it was 23.25. So the combined is also inefficient because that figure is negative. So you can also comment that the overall or the combined portfolio is also inefficient. The overall or the combined portfolio is also inefficient. It is inefficient. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. It is inefficient or it is overvalued by the market. So that was now the raw manager one. So that was for the portfolio theory. Let us now check Roma letter two. Roma letter two is on Capem. The Roma letter two is on Capem. So Roma letter one was portfolio theory. Portfolio theory normally use the capital market line to measure the risk. Now we got the Capem or the capital asset price model, which will now be using the security market line, which will now be using the security market line. So, we shall still be showing whether it, it is super efficient, efficient or inefficient. We shall still be showing whether they are super efficient, efficient or inefficient. So we shall have the column for the stock. Like that. So we should be able to have the column for the stock. So we shall be able to have the column for the stock. So apart from the stock, apart from the stock, we shall also realize that we use the security market line. When we use the security market line, we need to get the beta factor of the security. So beta factor of X, the beta factor of X. It is supposed to be given by, so this one, it will be given by, according to this question, get the beta factor of, let's say, the portfolio. Let us say to get the beta factor of the portfolio, you simply get correlation coefficient between the portfolio and the market multiplied by the standard deviation of that portfolio. Then you will divide by the 
the standard deviation for the market. Then now we get the return of the portfolio risk free rate plus risk free rate plus expected return for the market minus the risk free rate. Then we multiply by the beta factor for the portfolio. So this one we use the security market line. The other one we are using the capital market line. Then now you take expected return of the portfolio minus the return for the portfolio. Then we shall be required to comment for that. We shall be required to comment on that level. So we start with stock A. We start off with stock A. Yeah, so the explanation there is that we are using the CAPM. When we use CAPM, we require the beta factor. The beta factor was not given for this question to get the beta factor. It is the correlation coefficient between the portfolio and the market, not by the standard deviation of the portfolio. We divide by the standard deviation for the market. Then get the return for the portfolio. We have it in that manner. Then expected return for the portfolio minus the return for the portfolio. And then we comment on the basis of that. So we start off with stock L. We start off with stock L. So correlation coefficient, you can see in the question, they had given us correlation with the market. So this correlation for A is 0 0.55. Then the standard deviation for portfolio M, you can see the 17. Standard deviation for the market was A13. We had already calculated that figure. So that figure, I want you to round it off to from two decimal places. Round it off to two decimal places and see the value we get. Round it off to two decimal places. Round it off to two decimal places. It is giving us which value? 0.72. Zero point seven two. So we get the return for that portfolio. Return for the portfolio. So risk free rate was given. It was five. It was five. And then plus expected return for the market. Was it seventeen point nine? Just a confirmation. Was it seventeen point nine? Was it seventeen point nine? Just confirm. Yeah, then five, so the beta is 0 0.72, so we get that value, we get that value, we get that value. So how much do we get at that point? How much are we getting? So which value are we getting at that point? So 14.29, you can see 14.29, 14.29, then when it comes there, expected return for stock A was given, you can see in the question 12, you are given 12, then this return is 14.29. So it is negative. It means it is inefficient. It is inefficient or overvalued. It is inefficient or overvalued by the market forces. It is inefficient or overvalued by the market forces. So we do the same for B. We do 
the same for B. We do the same for B. So for B, we are given negative 0 0.75 multiplied by 22. That it was the same figure we use in all areas. That it is the same, it applied to each stock. So compute and see the value we should be getting at that point. Negative 1.27. Negative 1.27. So we also come here is 5 plus. Here you mean a pattern 17.9 minus 5 multiplied by 1.27. So that one should give us which value? So we are getting which figure? So negative 11.38, negative. 11.38. So overall, so that the expected was given as 20. And now we minus negative 11.38. So it will turn out to be positive. That difference will turn out to be positive, which means that. Stock B is super efficient. So the comment for B is that it is super efficient or it is undervalued by the market. It is super efficient or it is undervalued by the market. It is super efficient or it is undervalued by the market. So that's now meant to be B. We got to see we got to see. So when it comes to see, when it comes to see, we also do the same. Where we are given 0 0.84, also multiplied by 15, also divided by 13, also divided by 13. Zero point nine seven. Zero point nine seven. So this one will also be five then plus seventeen point nine. Then multiplied by zero point nine seven. And see which value are we getting at that point? Seventeen point five for one. Seventeen point five one. So when it comes to this portion, this one was given as eighteen. Also minus seventeen point five one. So even that one is super efficient. It is super efficient because it is positive. It is super efficient because it is positive. Then we also have D. So the one for D, which is negative 0 0.62 multiplied by 20, also divided by 13, also divided by 13. Negative zero point nine five. Negative zero point nine five. Then this other one should be five plus. Then also negative zero point nine five. Okay. 
So just a confirmation. So what are we getting at that point? Negative 7.26. So what you are given, what you are given there, it was actually 16. So even this one is super efficient. It is super efficient. It is super efficient. So I will also compute for the overall. 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 So, I need to get the combined beta factor. I need to get the combined beta factor. I need to get the combined beta factor. So to get the combined beta factor, we want to compute the combined beta of the portfolio. We had already calculated the total market value. So there was 60, we divide by the total, which was 304. So the beta factor for F, we have just seen up there, 0.72. You add B, it was 26, divide by 204. So that one, you recall, was the negative one. Negative one point two seven. The next one is forty. The next one is forty. Also divided by two point four. So this one you multiply by zero point nine seven. Zero point nine seven. We add the last one. Two seventy eight. Also divide by two zero four. But this one is more than negative zero point nine five. So combine them and see the figure we shall get. So just combine them and see the figure you'll be able to get at that. Mm -hmm. We are getting which figure? We are getting which value? Negative 0 0.123. So not millions. So, now we need to get the combined return of the portfolio. But the combined beta for the portfolio risk free rate is five, 
and expected return for the market is 17.9, also minus 5, then negative 0 0.123 like that. So compute them and see what we should be able to get. So three point four one three. So we are getting a figure of three. So, you want to know whether the overall was super efficient, inefficient, or efficient. So, we normally take the combined expected return for the portfolio, we subtract the combined return of the portfolio. So each report may compute already, we had calculated this figure. You remember, under the Roma letter one, we had already calculated this figure. It was 15.73, 15.73. You remind me, in case it is not the correct value, then now we have calculated this one, it is 3.4133. Yeah, so you can see overall is also super efficient. The overall is super efficient. The overall is super efficient. So now the question was asking that whether we should change the composition of the portfolio or not. Whether we should change the composition of the portfolio or not. So we need to change the composition because they are either super or inefficient. So we are supposed to have the efficient one. We are supposed to have efficient portfolio. But any moment, one of them is super or inefficient, you are advised to change. Because we want to have ideal working environment. Ideal working environment is where we have the efficient portfolio. So we can now conclude by noting that, we can now conclude by noting that, it should change the composition of the portfolio. It should change the composition of the portfolio. It should change the composition of the portfolio. Since, since individual portfolio, since the individual portfolios, the individual portfolios were either super efficient or inefficient, they were either super efficient or inefficient. They were either super efficient or inefficient. Then you continue by noting that the overall portfolio, the overall portfolio is super efficient. The overall portfolio is super efficient. Hence, hence the composition of the portfolio should change. Hence, the composition of the portfolio should change. Hence, the composition of the portfolio should change. But if all of them were efficient, if all of them were efficient and also the overall is efficient, then we don't change because that is now ideal working environment. But once one is super and another is inefficient, it means that someone is gaining at the expense of the other party. We want where the gain and the loss are the same. So we only, we shall not only change, yeah, the advice not to change must be when all of them are efficient. When all of them are efficient, then the advice we shall not change. So, I will be meeting you on Sunday at eight because there are some classes I missed. So I hope it is clear with everyone. Uh, your Sunday in Guinea, Pia, if I there be a need, I will be communicating to the group to meet you on those particular Sundays. Is it clear?
Ama watu wamechoka. Nimeona today there were a few people in the class. Ah, nasema tupatana at 8. 8. Ah, so I will be communicating to the group when I need you before you sit for the exam. This your time I lost when I was away. So, but all of them should be in Sunday. So we have like three Sundays remaining before you sit for the exam. So this one, I will be requiring you at eight. Then I will be communicating you any moment I need you when I'll be having time so that we revise some more other questions before your exam time. So remind, remind your colleague, I've seen today, like five people are not there. So they should not forget that they should not say that the exam now is far. Let them come and we, refer, we revise and finish. So let us stop there. We shall be meeting on Sunday at eight. On Sunday at eight to see what else you can cover from there. So let us stop there for now.
Thank you. 
Thank you. 